Welcome back to another exit ready deal review where my team over at Simple Broker reviews thousands of deals every single week so that you don't have to. And then we do these deal reviews where we surface the best ones to the top and go into the weeds as to what we're reviewing and why we believe this business is truly exit ready and potentially a deal that you should take a look at. Of course, you can always do this yourself. You can go over to simplebroker.ai, which is the simplest place to find and finance your next business. We're leveraging AI to become America's number one most active AI augmented business brokerage. And we're aggregating deals across hundreds of different sources at this point. We're uh, analyzing the data and surfacing the best insights so that you can make good timely decisions within your next acquisition decision. In terms of today's deal, uh, we're going to block out the name <laughs> just as we usually do, and we're going to get into the analysis. Uh, this is actually pulled directly from the simplebroker.ai site. I just added it to this Google Doc for simplicity. The deal we're looking at is an IT serviced and consulting business. We've actually been seeing a lot of these coming on market lately. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it is like the change of, of technology in the landscape or, or what. Uh, but there are businesses and they're not necessarily all aged out businesses either. This one happened to be established in 2009. It's in Hartford, Connecticut. They have annual revenue of 2.5 million with an EBITDA of 600,000 and 20 full-time employees. So you can definitely see very quickly, this is an established business, right? This is a later stage exit ready business. This is likely, you know, exit four, definitely trending towards exit five. I would like to think that they have their business system already in place. Hopefully they have an operator uh, that can actually run and, and maintain the day to day, take the ownership out of the business. That's the fourth exit. And now they're at this fifth exit where they're looking to transact, right? In terms of client uh, diversification and sustainability into the customer portfolio, they do have 15 major clients. And I believe the asterisk here is the 15 major clients are six figure contracts or more which means that they have a pretty large diversified base of established customers with good recurring revenue, with contracts in place for retention mechanisms. They offer managed IT services, cloud solutions, cybersecurity, which is very popular right now, IT consulting. So fairly standard services and solutions, but I'm sure there's opportunity to be able to add more. In terms of growth opportunities, they're saying that there is expansion into new markets. So maybe they're a regional player right now in Connecticut, who knows? Uh, we'll find out in our diligence. You know, they stated the fact of you know adding additional services, which is something I just said, increasing marketing efforts, which you know always acquire new customers is a way to grow. In terms of asking price, it's 3.5 million. I don't love it. We'll get in a little bit as to why. In terms of gross revenue, 2.5 million. In terms of cash flow, 600,000. Inventory, 500,000. FF&E, 200,000. Real estate is leased, not owned. They're saying that the reason for selling is is a retiring or aged out owner. So I guess, you know, in terms of the why earlier, it's an aged out owner. This is the part of the silver tsunami that we're seeing. They're offering up to six months in terms of a, a transition for the integration. And they seem to have a competitive local market position, diverse client base, high quality service and reliability. All of this information is again being provided uh, or sourced right from the from the the seller or the seller's broker we're not representing this deal uh, this is just a deal that we found and that we're reviewing in our analysis through our data aggregation platform right so exit ready scorecard when we're looking at this deal we're looking at it from the lens of a potential buyer with the information that we have thinking about the questions that we may have uh, looking at the sim that was provided right so from a exit ready scorecard, we're looking at the financial performance, know your numbers, profit led finance, start with the numbers, right? Measure what matters. From a, a financial performance, we're given in an eight, seems to be a strong financial performance in terms of uh, what the EBITDA margin is. From a client contracts perspective, a nine, because you have those long-term contracts in place, they're major revenue providers in terms of stability of revenue. So you could take risk off the table in terms of potential fear of, you know, taking this business over and then the revenue tanking with the owner leaving based off relationship. There's contracts in place, market position. They've been around for a really long time doing some pretty good revenue numbers. So we're saying that they're well known and respected. At least that's what's being reported and we give that a pretty competitive position. 
So for the market then in which they are operating, even though there's opportunity to potentially grow and scale outside of this to different markets, we're given an eight. Growth opportunities, seven, you know, these businesses get difficult to scale. You'll see a lot of these businesses later stages that are trading, you know, seven figures, uh, you know, they've reached the million dollar mark. There may be 2 million, 3 million, 4 million. You very rarely see uh, enough businesses that were more businesses that I would like to that get to the eight figures within this space. Uh, there's functional constraints in terms of the operational equity that needs to be built up for operational excellence to support the sc scale and sustainability in a systematized manner to deliver quality experience at scale of larger organizations like this. So you'll oftentimes see these, these market players uh, who have healthy revenue streams, but aren't able to really necessarily expand and grow. In terms of dependency on key clients, it seems as though there is a low concentration. Sometimes, oftentimes you'll see a handful of customers, like literally a handful of customers. This one had 15, you'll see sometimes five or less being a primary major concentration of revenue into these, that's risky. The fact that we don't see that here, I'm liking. From an operational efficiency perspective, you know, I would, I would, we're assuming as though because of the size of the employee base and the services in which they're providing and the stage and the age of the business, that the operational efficiency is pretty high, that they have effective operations, they've been able to close uh, long term contracts, right? and they have additional services on top of that to supplement and round out the revenue. They have 20 uh, plus, I believe it was 20 team members. So large team, you know, in terms of this, the scope and scale of this business uh, management team, there's uh, uh, the owner operator who's tr phasing out. We know that the owner's leaving uh, probably key man dependency here. So there may be a little bit of issue uh, we gave it an eight, so maybe there are some insights in terms of uh, leadership that's in, in, been put in place or the way that the business is potentially run. Based off of my high level perspective of this, I'd maybe give an asterisk here. So real time deal review of our deal review, I'd maybe go a little bit deeper into the management team and just make sure that the, the transition is there. They're saying that they're going to support in the transition, but we just want to make sure that there's no risks there. In terms of industry trends, definitely on trend. Cybersecurity is definitely on trend. IT services is on trend. With the advent of AI, this becomes a, an, an additional potential driver within this service and this service type of, this type of service business being the key implementer of some of these new technologies, there's a beachhead play for potentially to be able to leverage into that. In terms of the valuation, I'm not loving the valuation. I think that it's reasonable. The asking price is reasonable, but we really want to go deeper into the revenue and we want to be able to go deeper into the revenue in terms of the valuation drivers. Again, you know, price is what it is. I'd rather negotiate on terms. In terms of the deal structure of uh, the, the real estate, it's leased real estate. Um, in terms of the assets that are for sale, uh, everything seems to be pretty flexible within that. Uh, there's, I think, more attention to detail that needs to go in. So a total score is 79 out of 100. You know, didn't quite make that 80 score uh, that we're looking for when we go deeper into deals, but it's pretty close. Uh, it's a deal worth potentially considering. We would likely, you know, come in and become a finance partner, acquisition capital partner of choice for this type of deal. Uh, this is, you know, something that we would consider and why we're doing this deal review. So going deeper into the financial analysis of this, the revenue consistency, historical revenue trends over the past five years seem to be pretty stable. We want to make sure that there's not fluctuations to it, right? Make sure that it's consistently stable within that upscale profit margins, you know, compared with the industry average, everything seems to be pretty good. EBITDA, you got 24% EBITDA margin, you know, 600,000 on the 2.5 million. It's healthy but we want to make sure that it is benchmarking against industry standards from a contract terms, long-term contracts, you know, with potential clauses for renewals, great, strong place to be. You know, you just want to make sure that you continue to maintain the deliverables into those agreements and you could potentially underwrite this deal based off of those contract terms. What I would want to do is sum up all of these contract terms, see how long we still have 
in terms of, of, of um, in terms of present, present value of future cash flows. And I would like to be able to see what proportional percentage of the revenue that is, right? So that we could actually back into something that contractually we could build off of to be able to stabilize the underwriting of this deal. From a competitive landscape, good market share within the market that they are, right? There's opportunity in terms of the brand strength to be able to expand, right? You can expand into new markets, but also additional product lines and services. We talked about AI earlier. That's something that could be leveraged and, and grown into. Uh, cybersecurity is, is continually becoming a hot topic and there's more opportunities to sell into these things. And we have the ability to potentially position more services or products with you know incremental inbuilt recurring revenue. And that recurring revenue could really pattern the revenue streams to be able to help diversify the revenue concentration even further and better support the underwriting of these deals, even past that of the long-term contracts. Client relationships, I mean, it seems to be pretty, pretty learned low churn of the customer accounts, which means long-term retention. Sometimes when you see these long-term retention, the factor of the owner leaving can be a risk because sometimes people are just staying around based off of that relationship. So I, I would throw a little bit of an asterisk there, something to be able to look or consider a little bit deeper as you're going into this. Again, this is an exit ready review, right? So this is a high level back of napkin, you know, quick and dirty, down and dirty, you know, deal review. When we're going through our diligence, we go through all several hundred checklist items within brand equity, multiply that times two with operational equity. And that's when we're getting to our valuation and we're finding our key drivers to be able to build the wedge equity, right? So again, high level asterisk here. In terms of getting into the transition plan, the owner's willing to transition. We're assuming the team is there, but again, I would asterisk the management of that team, right? I wanna make sure that we're buying an asset, not a liability. I'd like to make sure that there's key people in place that can make good timely decisions so that we don't have to, right? That's the goal here when we are buying a business or buying an asset. In terms of you know the market, we want to look at different comparabilities to the market. We don't have that right now, uh, from a from a discount cash flow perspective. We'll do an an, a, an analysis, like I said earlier. It would be smart to do that against any of the recurring revenue or the contract revenue. You want you know revenue that are stabilized when you're doing this DCF analysis, so that you can plan appropriately. And then we're looking at what the sale is. Right, or how are we going to structure this? Is this going to be an asset-based sale? What's included inside of that? Or is this a stack sale? What types of potential liabilities would come along with this? What's the tax implement uh, implications? You know, so these are all things that we took into consideration when we you know came to our, our exit ready scorecard. You know, we got this to a 79 out of a hundred. You know, nothing's perfect, everything starts somewhere. This is some place to start. In terms of this exit ready scorecard, I'd say that this is a deal to potentially consider. It's not definitely a deal worth doing. You know, we've seen better deals in the past. We'll see better deals in the future. There's no called strikes in investing, uh, but this is a deal worth doing. And you know, what we would do is is definitely consider based off of this information, becoming the acquisition capital partner into this deal 